Hey mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm spending a little time with the weeping oak bracket fungus. The scientific name for this fella is Pseudo Inanatus dryadeus. And all that really means is the fake Inanatus that grows with oak trees. <laughs> and so this is an inedible mushroom. Uh, it is rock hard, although it is a little bit soft and almost furry on top. If you live in Raleigh, now you know exactly where I am. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, to look a little closer here, so we have this sort of yellowy brown fruiting body, and it is, as I mentioned, rock hard, more or less, and it, it has a little bit of resonance, like a little bit of a um, hippie drum thump, so that's pleasant, but you certainly can't harvest and eat it. The thing that makes this mushroom really neat and gives it its common name, let me see if I can bring my camera down to the level of this lovely oak bracket. And so you can see it has what's called guttation. So it's this sort of uh, droplets of amber or brown, sometimes it's more yellowish in color. Uh, that accumulates on this yellowish brown surface of the fruiting body. And so you get the little, little rivulets and droplets. It's very attractive, even though, again, you can't eat this mushroom. I really love to find it because uh, it often has this just amazing sort of uh, shimmery appearance on top. Let me lean out of the way and see if we can get a little, little bit of shiny on that. So. That is the weeping oak bracket fungus, again, Pseudo Inanatus dryadeus. Now I want to talk to you about the Pseudo Inanatus part just a little bit, because uh, again, it means fake Inanatus. And Inanatus obliquus is a really prized medicinal mushroom commonly called chaga. And so if you buy mushroom coffee or mushroom supplements, you'll oftentimes have chaga in those blends. And uh, it is a mushroom that grows exclusively on birch trees, which means that it's largely in northern latitudes where it's much, much colder. Now, I mention it because we see a lot of activity in folks who are trying to get identification. They'll find, uh, you know, flaws on trees, especially cherry trees and, um, you know, sort of other charcoal-y looking bits and they oftentimes mistake it for chaga. And so I mention that because, you know, really, if you see something that is sort of charcoal-y and crumbly growing on hardwood trees, especially cherry, because they look a little bit like beech, they have sort of smoother, silvery bark, uh, it is very unlikely if you live in North Carolina or the southeastern U.S. that that's what you have. Again, uh, birch trees are very much instrumental to uh, chaga's life cycle. I don't know much about the medicinal properties. I do want to talk a little bit about its life cycle because it is a super cool fungus in some ways. So um, it is a mushroom that essentially creates fruiting bodies and the things that we consume in our teas and so forth is sort of this hunk of what looks like charcoal kind of and it often has a little bit of uh you know medium brown dusting on the outside but it definitely looks very unlike a mushroom that you would eat however uh you know it's been collected in russia and then is also a very um thriving sort of forage product and so uh, the thing about it is that that chaga, that, that crunchy bit, is not the fruiting body of the mushroom at all, which is one of the reasons it don't look like a mushroom in our classic sense of things. Instead, what uh, Inanatus uh, obliquus will do is it uh, rots sort of the interior of its host, oftentimes enters through a wound, as many, many mushrooms and brackets do, and the uh, sort of chunky, dry, charcoal-y mess is actually a whole bunch of Inanatus mycelium, which is kind of bonkers because most mycelium looks like little threads and it's a little bit pliable. Uh, and so the fact that it's this hunk of chunk of whatever is kind of unusual. So at the point at which that fungus has actually killed its host, 
or made it very, very weak, that is when Inundatus obliquus goes into its fruiting phase. And so it does make a fruiting body. Uh, I'm just going to point this because I don't want to have my face in the camera all the time, but this does not look like the fruiting body of Inundatus uh, obliquus. Most people don't ever observe it because again, the desirable phase of that mushroom's life or that fungus's life cycle is during this uh, sterile phase where it's forming this big hunk of charcoaly goodness. And so once it does fruit, it also uh, grows underneath the surface of the bark. And so even if you're looking out for it, you're pretty unlikely to see it. And so this is one of those interesting moments where mushrooms will be even more obscure. So like there are a lot of mushrooms that form these things called sclerotia, which are little um, tubers, little truffles, and that's where they create their spores. And similarly, the chaga mushroom, it has this little fruiting body that is very rarely observed. One final note, and this is, you know, research that I don't know a lot about because again, I am a mycogoblin and a mushroom hunter and not a mycologist. However, I attended a really cool talk at uh, the North American Mycological Association foray in 2015. So this is a minute ago, but uh, there was a fella there, his name's Britt Bunyard, and he is a very noteworthy person in the world of North American mycology. And he did uh, a lecture about chaga and its life cycle. And so this is kind of how I got my head around this whole strange uh, scenario. And one of the things he talked about is how there is some good evidence that there is a beetle that um, actually will consume pieces and parts of that fruiting body. And so that's one of the ways that spores are dispersed. And I guess there was some research collecting these little beetles and then dissecting them and finding evidence of you know, chaga spores and uh, fruiting bodies within them. So I think that's really cool because I guess uh, as I learn more, there are a lot of mushrooms that specialize in uh, attracting beetles and other insects. There are gazillion beetles and some very specific cool relationships between mushrooms and beetles. So that's one of them, at least there, you know, there's pretty good evidence to suggest that that's the case. So that's the deal with chaga, at least as far as I can tell you for today. But suffice it to say, you know, if you're a forager in the Southeast, it's very unlikely you will find it. Um, but you know, that doesn't mean that if you find brackets or unusual little balls of uh, charcoal-y stuff on, on trees, that it's not interesting. So like one of the things besides burls and flaws on cherry trees that are oftentimes mistaken for chaga is the leftovers of the um, boogie woogie aphid, which is this woolly little uh, collection of aphids and they will uh, collect in beech trees. And this is another thing that fools people. So beech trees are smooth barked. So some folks are like, that looks a lot like photographs of birch trees I've seen with chaga. And then they see this big sort of crusty uh, black collection of goo. Well, it's not goo, it's, uh, it's sort of, um, crusty and powdery a little bit when you start to handle it. And that is the remains of, again, these little aphid colonies. And they're, they're the funky little creatures. So they're sort of woolly and grayish white in color. And you'll see little uh, groups of them on um, beach in particular. And if you tap the branches that they're on, they will wave their butts in the air and it's very dramatic and they do it all in unison. And so it's, it's one of those very unusual things about nature that I enjoy observing. However, you know, so uh, basically your cherry trees and burls on them, and then your boogie woogie, woogie aphids on your smooth uh, beech trees are things that may make things that look a bit like chaga. All right, so that's all the time I have for mushrooms today. I do want to uh, really thank people for subscribing to the channel. It's been so awesome to have the support that y'all have offered me. I do also want to let you know that I don't respond to YouTube comments largely because I don't have uh, the courage to read and respond to all of the comments. And so uh, I am very active. On Facebook, there is a very active mushroom identification and, uh, you know, sort of networking community there. I hate to recommend Facebook for much of anything, 
but mushroom facebook is substantially different and so you know i do sometimes go in and read comments and i sometimes reply to them but i also don't have a lot of time and honestly there are a few youtubers that i really love who uh left the scene because of youtube comments and all of y'all been very kind but i also uh you know i want to protect my tender little heart so all that's to say I really appreciate the support and I'm going to leave a link in the description here for a website, uh, mushroomanna.com. And I have some art that I do. This is actually, it's kind of my logo. It's a Amanita mushroom with uh, circuit board traces because I like technology, but uh, you know, it doesn't have my name on it or anything like that. So you can pick up that shirt if you're interested. Uh, I also have some educational resources there. So, uh, you know, if you want to go check that out, support the channel, that's great. And again, like if you want to engage with me and engage with other folks in the mycology community online, there are lots of places to do that. But one of the places I do that and connect with the folks that I'm talking about. So, you know, the besets of the world who write the wonderful guidebooks for our part of the region and, uh, you know, the Brit Bunyards of the world who are looking at how, um, Beetles are spreading spores. The great Bill Yule, who is also a big fan of, you know, mushrooms and beetle relationships. So that's where I connect with those folks uh, and, you know, the other communities. But again, there are lots of vibrant places to learn about this stuff, but that's where I spend my time uh, for the most part, engaging with folks and identifying things. So I really appreciate y'all's time. I hope you find a lot of mushrooms and do a little bit better with the uh, hens of the woods that I am currently doing. And I hope we talk again soon.